Welcome to Christ Tabernacle, where people have gathered all across this nation to worship the God we serve today. He's mighty. He's an unstoppable God. Hallelujah. Heaven thundered, and the world was born. Life begins and it ends in the dust you fall. Through the 
Lift him up. Hallelujah. Praise him. Worship him. So faithful, Jesus. Before me, behind me, always beside me. No shadow, no valley. Where you won't find me, Jesus. Never afraid. You're always no with shadow, me, Jesus. No Nothing can harm you. Nothing can no touch us. Be drowned because my God, my 
He has not given us a spirit of fear. Trust in you, Jesus. There's a grace when the heart is under fire. Another way when the walls are closing in. And when I look at the space between where I used to be and this reckoning, I know I will never be alone. There is another in the fire standing next to me. There was another in the wild rolling back the sea. And should I ever need reminding of how I've been set free, there is a cross that bears a burden. Will another die for me? There is another in the fire. Hallelujah. God, you're there. You're there with us, Lord. Every step of the way. Hallelujah. Oh, my dad left for dead beneath the water. I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore. Should I fall in the space between what remains of me and this reckoning? Either way, I won't bow to the things of this world. And I know, I know I will never be alone. There is another in the fire. Another in the waters, rolling back the sea. Should I ever need reminding? How I set me free. There is a grave that holds no body. Now that power lives in me. There is another in the fire. Between us, nothing stands 
Good morning to all of you who have logged on today, and we're bringing this to you from the beautiful Sanctuary of Christ Tabernacle Church. It's the best we can do today, and we thank you for welcoming, welcoming us into your home in these difficult days. And we are right now have uh, launched a new prayer initiative at our church we do 30 hours of prayer from wednesday morning at six all the way down to noon on thursday and we're asking people to sign on for 15 minute time slots this church just completed that this past week and if you're out there watching today and you want to join on to that prayer initiative you just call and let us know join me in prayer today because we're going to launch into some prayer right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we put on the whole armor of God and the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And it's through the mighty God in Jesus' name that we pull down strongholds. We cast down vain imaginations and every high thing that has exalted itself against the knowledge of Jesus Christ. We pull it down through the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we speak God's anointing over these families today in their homes. Anoint these men and women, these children, grandchildren. And you said the anointing does break every yoke. I pray today, Lord, that you will reorder the American society. We've gone too far. We've done too many wrong things, and we have just outright sinned. So in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray every diabolical subverting activity from the gates of hell that's launched itself upon the people of God and upon this nation be broken. Everything that opposes the will of God, we break through barriers. We break through barricades that the enemy has tried to keep us from arriving at our God-ordained destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ, we disannul every ruling that has come against the people of God, against our lives, against our families, against our health, and against our finances. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, you will take control of the airways. I pray you will take control, Lord, of the media. I pray you will take control over this nation, Lord. And I pray that we will align ourselves with the word of God. And I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, you will release the supernatural anointing upon these men and women that are viewing here this morning. I pray angels into their home right now, angels of protection. And I pray and we call down the glory of God into our lives and Lord, into our homes, into our finances and into our health. And we are believing right now, Lord, that you are anointing us and we call, Lord, for a change in the spiritual atmosphere over central Illinois. Right now in the homes that are watching, I'm going to pray for you. And you might want to just take your hand and do this. 
and anoint your home. And we pray, Lord, every home anointed. You want to do whatever you feel comfortable doing. But this week, um, Deborah and I took a bottle of oil, just ordinary olive oil. We anointed our doors on the outside. We anointed our doors on the inside. And we said, don't enter. You're not welcome here. Disease isn't welcome. Demonic spirits are not welcome. You can't go here. We're putting by the faith, the blood of the lamb upon our doors. And you may want to anoint your home and anoint your family. And we're praying that God will give you that which you have desired. Some of you have known for a long time from the time you were a child. Some of you have known that God has something special for you. And some of you right now are spiritually dissatisfied. God has brought a dissatisfaction into your life and you are hungering and you are thirsting and you are searching. And I'm telling you right now, the Holy Spirit of God is going to lead you and he's going to come right now into your house and he's going to come right where you're sitting and he's going to minister to you and he's going to bring a change in your life that you would not believe he can do. But I'm saying here today that we're releasing that anointing into your home, into your life, into your children. Don't be afraid of it. Walk toward God. Get that intimacy with him. Just draw close. The Lord has called you for many years. That nagging voice, that emptiness that's been in you. You knew there was more to life than materialism. You've known this a long time because you have been so dissatisfied. You can't quite find the fulfillment. It didn't come in career. It didn't come with money. It didn't come with materialism. There's still a void. I'm here telling you right now, I'm looking at you and the Holy Spirit of God is coming into your house. And more than that, he's coming into you. Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Just lift your hands and receive him today. Now, as we close in prayer, we're going to pray for a couple of needs. We're going to pray for Michael Worley. Michael fell yesterday from... 40 to 45 feet on a green bin. And of course, you know, that is not a good thing. But yet, God was with him. No brain injuries, no head injuries, no neck injuries. Thank God. But he does have some broken sternum, broken ribs, broken pelvis, uh, broken ankle, broken heel. And we're going to believe God's going to heal that. We're going to pray for Carrie Rhodes Reed. Carrie is... Is struggling right now. Both of these are wonderful people. In the name of Jesus, we send healing to Michael at Barnes Hospital. In the name of Jesus, we send healing to Carrie Rhodes Reed. We pray for anyone else that's out there. I think Ken Rodman needs prayer. And if you're in your home and you're sick, we're going to send the prayer of faith to you right now. Just lay hands on your body. In the name of Jesus, the Bible said, lay hands on the sick in the name of the Lord and they shall recover. Simple, just as simple as it can be. So if you're sick, lay hands on the friends around you and say, in the name of Jesus, we're going to be raised up. We're not going to die. We're going to get well. We've got life coming. We've got a great future. God is getting ready to do something great. Don't miss it. Don't miss this next great move of God. Don't miss it. Get in this. Swim in it. Flow with it. In the name of Jesus Christ, lift your hands and praise him with me. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. We hope you've enjoyed this service thus far. If you have any prayer requests, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. That way we can pray and believe with you. Typically during our regular service, now's the time when we give our tithes and offerings. The great thing about technology is we can do that right here from where you sit. All you have to do is visit Christhab.com or text the amount to 84321 and follow the prompts on the screen. Pastor Jeremy's gonna come, but before he does, we have one more song and then he's going to come and lead us in an encouraging word this morning. We want to thank you again for being here, and God bless. Lord, where do I go when there's no one else to turn to? Who do I talk to when nobody wants to listen? Who do I lean on every day when there's no foundations 
stable, I go to the rock, cause I know he's able, I go to the rock. I go, go to the stone that the builders rejected. I run to the mountain and the mountain stands by me. Yes, it does. When the earth all around me is seeking sand, on Christ the solid rock I stand. When I need shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. Where do I go? The storms of life are threatening. Who do I turn to when the winds of sorrow blow? Is there a refuge? Yes, there is. In the time of tribulation, I go to the rock. I know He's able. I go to the rock. Yes, I do. I go. I go to the rock. I go, go to, to the storm that the builders rejected. I run to the mountain, mountain and that mountain stands by me. Yes, it does. And the earth all around us is sinking sand. But I'm Christ the solid rock I stand. When I need shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. I go to the rock of The solid rock I stand When I need shelter When I need a friend I go to the rock 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 When I need a shelter I go to the rock When I need a friend You can go to the rock You can go to the rock You can go to the just run to the rock You can go to the rock You can stand on the rock You can go to the rock You can go to the rock I go to the rock To the rock I run I go to the rock To the rock Yes, he is I go My rock To the rock I go I go To the rock To the rock When the earth around me is sinking sand Oh, Christ the solid rock I stand when I need a friend, I go to the rock. I go to the rock. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. We want to welcome you today, and we're so glad that you have joined us. Wherever you are at across this world, we hope that you have felt blessed and encouraged by everything that you've viewed so far, and we believe that God isn't finished yet. Today, I want to continue a thought that I had last week, and that is how to keep calm in a crisis. And we are in a crisis right now all across this world, and I believe that God's Word can show us how to make it through this crisis. In Matthew 8, 23, we see... That it says this, and when he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great storm on the sea, so that the boat was being swamped by the waves, but he was asleep. I want us to see here that it was Jesus' idea to take this journey. He's the one who said, Hey guys, let's get in the boat and let's cross on to the other side. And you know, sometimes when we follow Jesus, it doesn't mean that everything is fine all the time. It doesn't mean that everything's perfect all the time. There's going to be some storms. There's going to be some crises that you encounter when you follow Jesus. And the promise we have isn't that we won't encounter problems. The promise we have is that Jesus will be in our boat in the crisis. Jesus will be in our boat daring the storm. And I don't know about you, but if I'm going to encounter a storm, I want Jesus in my boat. 
And God takes responsibility. I want you to hear this today. God takes responsibility for those who follow him. If we were following Jesus and we encounter the storm, the storm is his responsibility. It's his responsibility to keep us and to protect us. And so today, I just want to encourage somebody today that maybe you lost your job this week or maybe you're physically fighting this virus. I want to encourage you that Jesus is with you in your boat. Jesus is with you in this situation. He has not left us. He has not forgotten about us. And then this, this uh, storm was so boisterous that the waves were surrounding this boat. And it looked like it was just going to swallow them up. Have you ever felt like that? Have you ever felt overwhelmed by the circumstances you're going through? I know a lot of people right now feel overwhelmed by what we're going through right now. Whether it's you know, the, the physical part whether it's you know, losing your job, whether it's trying to make ends meet financially. There's a lot of people who can resonate with this story. The waves are all around, and it doesn't look like it's getting better. You know, and overwhelming storms affect us in three ways. Number one, they affect us physically. Storms overwhelm us physically, that we feel tired, you know, just trying to, to keep everything afloat, trying to keep everything going can be physically tiring. And storms overwhelm us emotionally, that emotionally we can be drained. And, and right now, so many people that are dealing with anxiety, depression, and maybe the shame of losing your job, maybe the shame of not being able to do what you want to do right now. And so emotionally, we're facing an overwhelming storm where we just don't know what to do. And then lastly, storms overwhelm us spiritually. And this is the most important because if, if Satan can overwhelm us spiritually, if he can get us just to try to quit, and just to, to get us to stop what we're doing, he can really get us to a point of despair and to lose all hope. And I want you to notice that in this story that Jesus had fallen asleep on the boat. Jesus had gone to sleep while this storm was raging. He was in the back of the boat, sound asleep. And maybe you're watching today and you can resonate with that. That you feel like God is not present in this situation. You feel like God is not present in this storm. That he has just checked out. It doesn't feel like he's answering prayer. It doesn't feel like situations are changing. Maybe for some people out there, it's gotten worse. Maybe uh, you've lost your job and, and may not ever get your job back. I don't know what the situation is, but I want to tell you that just because Jesus is asleep doesn't mean that he isn't still in control. And what I mean by that is this. Do you think that Jesus didn't know that this storm would come? I believe as God, he knew this storm was, come, was coming, and he wanted to test his disciples' faith. And there's going to be times in our life where it feels like God is asleep, where it doesn't feel like God is present in our storm. But I want to give you today some points of what we need to do and how do we keep calm in a crisis when the storm looks overwhelming. And in verse 25, it says, they went and woke him saying, save us, Lord, we are perishing. So the first thing that you need to do is this, is that you need to pray fervently. And right now is the time for our prayer warriors to step up. Right now is the time for the church to rise up, and we need to pray like we have never prayed before. We need to storm the throne room of God like we have never before. I love what Proverbs 18.10 says. It says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower the righteous run to it and are safe. Somebody today needs to run to that strong tower. Somebody today needs to call upon the name of Jesus. And I want to encourage you today that when you're in the middle of a storm, that's not the time to not call on God. That's not the time to run from God. That's not the time to forget God and get discouraged. That's the time that like these disciples, they ran to Jesus and woke him up. You need to run and call upon the name of Jesus today. Now I want to tell you that when you call upon the name of Jesus, anything is possible. Anything can happen. The question I have is this. Why did these disciples wait so long to wake Jesus up? 
Why did they wait until the last minute when things looked completely hopeless to go wake him up? And I want to make this statement today, and that is this. Prayer should be our first response, not our last resort. I'm going to say that again, and we're going to have that on your screen so that you can keep this in mind. Prayer should be our first response, not our last resort. It's not you know, our plan B. It's not if, if what we want works out, we'll go to prayer. No, we need to pray first. We need to pray before anything, and especially in this season, we need to pray before we do anything. I love what First Peter chapter 5, verse 6 and 7 says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you. Right now, we need to humble ourselves, and we need to say, God, we are asking you to intervene on our behalf, and, and pride will keep you from praying. Pride will try to convince you to quit praying. But when we humble ourselves, God is attracted to humility. And then verse 7 says this, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. And that word cast means it's like the throw. And some of us today, we just need to unload on God. And I know that may sound strange and may sound a little bit different than what you've ever heard before, but I, I believe that we have a God that's big enough to handle it. Whatever is making you fear, afraid, whatever's making you feel anxious, you need to give that to God. And it's not a sin to feel those things. That's just part of being human. But we can't hold on to fear. We can't hold on to anxiety. We've got to cast it to our Father in heaven who can handle it. If he can carry the cross and he can carry your sins, and he can carry the sins of the world. He can handle your fear. He can handle your anxiety. And so right now is the time for the church. Right now is the time for anybody who's troubled to pray fervently. And we need to pray more than we've ever prayed before. You know, God, I, I don't believe that he invented this virus. I don't. I don't believe that comes from God. However, I believe that God has allowed this to happen. And I believe that he's allowed it to happen maybe to wake us up a little bit, to what's eternal, to wake us up so that we can run back to him. And maybe you've been running from God. Maybe you're a prodigal out there that you've left the Father's house. And I want to tell you, now's the time to pray. Now's the time to run back to the Father's house. James 5.15 says this, The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Come on, does anybody believe that out there today? Anybody believe that at home? That the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. And then he, he gives this example. Elijah was a human being. He was an Old Testament prophet who was a powerful man. But he was a human being even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again, he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. Now, I want to tell you today, prayer changes things. Prayer changes things. And I'm just believing that if enough of us pray, and we come together in faith, and we storm the gates of heaven, I believe that we can change this situation we're going through right now. We can change uh, the, the effect of this virus. I believe that we can change the economics of this. Somebody believe with me right now. I, I'm not denying the science when I say that. I'm just believing God. I'm not denying that the situation's bad, and I'm not living in denial that bad things aren't happening, but I choose to believe that God is greater than not only the storms of this life, God is greater than this virus. Then in Matthew 8, 26, we see our next step. And he said to them, Jesus said to them, why are you afraid? Oh, you of little faith. Then he rose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. The second thing that we need to do to keep calm in a crisis is to focus on Jesus, not on the storm. We need to focus on Jesus, not on this virus. Before Jesus, I want you to see, before he calmed the storm, before he rebuked the storm, he rebuked his disciples for their lack of faith. And I just want to tell us today, and I want to bring us today to the realization that our real enemy is not coronavirus. Our real enemy is a lack of faith. Our real enemy is our lack of an ability to believe that Jesus is 
who he is. And today, I believe that if we just increase our faith and we focus on Jesus and not the storm, that great things can happen in our communities, in our families, and in this world. Our greatest enemy today is not corona. It is fear and a lack of faith. And we will make it through this storm one way or another. I said that last week, and I believe that still, that we will make it through this storm one way or another. Why? Because we have Jesus in our boat. We will make it to where he has said that we will go. And Jesus, in this storm, he spoke just a few words, and the winds and the waves ceased. And and Matthew, we see, he gives an account of the storm, and he says that the words that Jesus spoke were simply, peace be still. And I want you to know today that we serve the Lord over the storm. This virus is not greater than our God. The economics that's going around this world right now and the economical situation is not greater than Jesus. He is Lord over everything. He reigns today in heaven supreme. There's nobody like him. There's none before him, none after him. There is Jesus today. How many knows that's the God we serve? He is the Lord over the storm. And with a few words, he can change this situation instantly. And I believe that Jesus can supernaturally change whatever situation you're going through, whatever situation our nation's going through, with just a few words. And I'm not, again, denying what's happening. I'm just choosing to believe God. There's a scripture in the Old Testament that gives us the key to how to handle a crisis. You know, I I believe that God is wanting to step in to human history. He's wanting to step in to this situation. But he gave the Israelites this word in 2 Chronicles 7.13, but I believe that it's relevant to us. And he says, when I have shut up the heaven and there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, or I want you to see this, send pestilence. And that's what we're dealing with right now. This virus is a pestilence. And he says, when I send them among my people, And this next verse is so important. He says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. And so he's saying, if you would just stop focusing on the pestilence, if you would stop focusing on the problems, and if you would humble yourselves and turn to me and focus on me, I will take care of the crisis. And I just want to challenge all of us right now. Let's focus on Jesus more than the problem, more than the situations around us. Let's focus on him first, and he will take care of the rest. He has promised that he would heal his land if the people which are called by his name would humble themselves and pray Wow, what would happen if all the churches in America followed this verse? What would happen if all the Christians in America would follow this verse and humble themselves and begin to pray? And if we all turned from our wicked ways, I believe that God would heal our land. In Matthew 8, 27, we see the third thing that we need to do in a crisis, and that is this. When we come out of it, we need to leave the storm better than we were before we entered it. In verse 27, it says, And the men marveled, saying, What sort of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? After Jesus performed this miracle, they said, Lord, save us. And he gets up and he rebukes their lack of faith. And then he rebukes the storm. And it instantly becomes peaceful and still. And they have this revelation that Jesus has power over nature. Jesus has power over the storm. And maybe they had a belief in Jesus after this storm that they hadn't had before it. Maybe before this storm, they thought that Jesus was just a good teacher, but he didn't have the power to totally change situations and totally supernaturally change the storm. 
But I want to tell you is that after you've gone through a storm and you've seen what Jesus can do and you've seen his power over nature, it's going to increase your faith and you're going to be better after the storm than you were before the storm. And I believe that God is what he's wanting to do in my life and your life and whoever's watching is he wants us to be better after the storm. He wants us to have more faith after the storm. He wants us to believe for more after the storm. Why? Because we're about to get a revelation about how great and powerful our God is. And today I choose to have faith. I choose to believe that God is doing something in this storm because I know that Jesus is in our boat. And if he is in our boat, it cannot sink. It cannot be destroyed. And I want to tell you today, the crisis, the storm has a purpose. God never wastes a problem. God never wastes a crisis. The crisis is to make you more like him and to increase your faith and so that he can show you just how powerful he is. And I really believe this, that God has brought you this far and God has brought you to this moment to draw you closer to him. God is whatever you're experiencing today. It's not a wasted trial. It's not a wasted experience. But God has allowed that to happen so he can draw you closer to him. And I want to invite you today, no matter who you are, maybe you're someone who doesn't claim to be a Christian, you don't claim to believe. Maybe you're someone who used to follow God, but you've just kind of got sidetracked and you've lost your way and you've lost your faith. He's allowing all of us to experience this situation so we can all draw closer to him. And today, if you have never made up your mind to follow Jesus, you need to do that today. You need to make up your mind and you need to make him Lord of your life. And you need to surrender every part of your life to him. And there comes peace when you know that you are following him and you know that he is in your boat. You see, it's not that you won't have any more problems. It's not that you won't go through any more storms. It's just today I have a peace in my life. And so many people watching today have a peace in their life because they know that no matter what storm they encounter, they're going to be okay because Jesus is in their boat. So if you have never done that right now, maybe just lift up your hands wherever you're at and say, Lord Jesus, I am giving you my life. I believe that you are master of the storm. I believe that you are the one true God. I believe that you came and you died for me. You came and you were buried and resurrected and you're coming back again. Amen. That's what it takes. You just have to believe who Jesus is. And if you said that today and you made that decision, your next step is to be water baptized in the name of Jesus. And I believe that we we are still going to baptize during this crisis. There may not be as many people around, but we can still baptize you. So if you've never been water baptized, if you've never taken that next step, Everywhere in the Bible, when people believe the next step they took was to be water baptized, and you need to do that as soon as possible, and hit me up here on Facebook, reach out to us, we will see to it that you are able to take that step. But I believe that God is not done with us today. God is not done with me. God is not done with you. The storm has a purpose in Jesus' name. We want to pray for you today before we end our service. And I just want to pray for everybody out there who needs a miracle in this season of your life. We're believing God for physical miracles. We're believing God for financial miracles. And we're believing God for a miracle for our economy and for our nation and that this thing will come to an end. And I wonder if everybody could just pray with me right now and let's join together. Father, we thank you, Jesus, that you are with us in the crisis. You are with us in the storm. God, I pray for everybody watching out there, Lord, that's in the uncertainty of unemployment. God, I pray for anybody out there, Lord, that's dealing with this problem physically or has a family member that's dealing with this physically. God, we pray healing to their body. God, you, Lord, shed your blood on Calvary for our healing. And so, Lord, we pray today, touch every person, God, that tuned in today all over the world. In Jesus' name, let's lift up our hands. We're going to sing one more song. Let's go into this week with victory. 
believing that God is fighting for us in Jesus name before me behind me always beside me no shadow no valley where you will find me no I am not afraid come on let's believe this before me behind me always beside me no shadow 